absolutely. It's great to be here. All right, thanks for being with the NCPA today. Yeah. What are the three main national security changes the next president should make in this war against uh, radical Islam? Number one is to articulate to the American people what it is that we're facing. Clearly define this enemy to the American public. Tell the American public very honestly what it is that we need to do about winning this particular uh, war that we are, that we have being waged against us. Make sure that we inform the American public that this is an enemy that has declared war on us. And I think part of that articulation, part of that definition, real precise definition of what we're facing, radical Islamism, we now next need to then get our own house in order. We need to get ourselves together in a very coherent, cohesive way before we start putting demands on an international community that we will need to be able to fight this enemy. And I think those are the, the, the initial steps and certainly the initial conversation that I think uh, that I would recommend for uh, the next president. What are the American public's biggest misconceptions about radical Islam? I think American public has been lied to. I mean, I really think that the American public has been misinformed by the government. Um, and I, and I, you know, I know that's a strong word, um, but the the uh, <clears throat> this idea that that uh, that this doesn't that this problem doesn't exist in this ideology that this disease doesn't exist that this disease has not metastasized to the point of being uh, so bad where our current director of the FBI talks about you know having a thousand cases dealing with the Islamic State right here in the homeland, and all 50 of our states have open cases that they're running that are directly related to the Islamic State. I mean, if the FBI director is saying that, why can't, the, why can't the President of the United States articulate that? And I think that, that the people of America, I know the people of America, uh, are tough, we're, we are resilient, we're patriots, and we can take, you know, that kind of news. But when there is a, a dishonesty about what it is that we are facing, that we can clearly see, I think that that does a disservice to the American public. And I think that that's what the, the uh, I, frankly, I think that's what the next president should do. I, I would love to see our president. I would love to cheer for our president. And, and, you know, if he were to step up and actually have the intellectual courage and fortitude to be able to say that. But uh, what we don't hear that out of this administration. Many people don't recognize just how vital intelligence is to national security. So what do the American people need to understand about the importance of intelligence? Yeah, so intelligence is a, is a, uh, is a massive, major, vital, critical, whatever the adjective you want to use is, um, uh, capability that uh, we have in the United States far better than any other country in the world if it's prioritized properly, and then used correctly. And I think that we need to uh, take a look at how our intelligence operations are prioritized around the world. It, the, the prioritization of, it, of the U.S. intelligence system starts with the President of the United States, and he actually sets the priorities. This is a no kidding. You have to, Mr. President, you know, in your role as President, in your role as Commander in Chief, you have to sign off. On, on how we're going to prioritize this massive system that we have, which is very capable and very effective. So the role of intelligence is vital in the war against radical Islamism and how we, how we uh, leverage it, how we use it, how we, uh, how we action the intelligence that we have, how we create opportunities using intelligence. Um, and I think that the second part is, is making sure that the intelligence system and all of the talented people that work inside of it feel that they can be brutally honest with their assessments and how they, they know that, that even though whatever they, whatever they assess something to be, the policymakers may decide to go in a different direction for, for different purposes, but they need to know that when they say something, it is truth to power, meaning what you say has to be what you absolutely believe. It has to be the truth as you know it. The intelligence system in the United States of America is superb when it's prioritized correctly and when it's applied correctly, uh, it, it can work. When it's not, it's, it's, it's uh, a capability that, 
that is not meeting its maximum potential for the people of this country. And I think that one last thing on, on intelligence, the people of America are paying for this intelligence, okay? So the people of America need to believe that the intelligence is honest. And so if we hear something coming out of a president and, and the people of America can see, can see it very clearly for what it is, that the people of this country stop believing that there's honesty at a certain level. And, there's on, and maybe there's no honesty coming out of the intelligence system. And we have to, we have to protect the, the trustworthiness, the integrity, uh, that, that is inviolable. It means it cannot be harmed uh, in any way, fashion, or shape. And, the, and if there's people or, you know, political types inside of our, inside of our intelligence system that, that hurt the integrity of the intelligence capability and the intelligence assessments that are being provided, that's a dangerous thing for this country. And to a degree, you know, I've seen some of what we call the politicization of intelligence over time. And that's a very, it's not a good place for the country to be. It's a dangerous place, actually.